A lot of people were really happy when the S6 was announced bringing a new redesign with a more premium finish. But at the same time, they took away the water resistant construction which made the S5 a very unique flagship smartphone. Naturally though, they brought it back with the S6 Active, which is good because not only that, it also has a more ruggedized design as a whole and follows in form to the previous Active smartphones we've seen. Nowadays, we see very few high-end phones sporting water resistant constructions. So obviously, it's just so refreshing that we have it here again. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here. You're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active. So how can we describe the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active? Well, it's actually like having an OtterBox permanently built into your phone, but without the added bulk. Now, some will say that the S6 Active's design is not the most attractive. It depends on how you feel about it, but it's no doubt very solid with its construction. It's pretty similar to last year's offering. It's water resistant because of its IP68 ratings. It's also shock resistant and also dust proof. And with the improved water resistance, uh, they've actually uh, treated the micro USB port uh, so that you don't have to worry about covering it. It's always left exposed, but there's no need to worry about it getting damaged. Now with it being IP68 rated, that means you could take it to the shower, take a dip in the pool, and even spill liquids on it without too much concern or worry. And that's the nice thing about it. It's pretty much ruggedized in every way. And with this, they've actually put in a larger battery while still having the same exact internals as the Samsung Galaxy S6. So we do all about AMOLED technology, but Samsung has perfected the recipe for making displays. They've shown us, shown it in the S6 and the S6 Edge, and the S6 Active follows in true form. It's perfectly calibrated, meaning it offers 100% color accuracy in the sRGB spectrum. Now it has the same 5.1 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display, so you can expect an incredible amount of detail with the resolution. But beyond that, it has a very ideal color temperature close to the reference value of 6500 Kelvin. So the screen's neither too warm or too cold. It's right there in the middle. And to top it off, it has a 570 nit luminance, making it even brighter than the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge displays. So in terms of real world usage, it's bright, iridescent, and depending on what mode you have, it can deliver some really potent colors. This is the same experience we saw right in the S6. So you have TouchWiz running on top of Android 5.0.2 Lollipop. More streamlined than previous versions of TouchWiz and you don't have all those redundant features. You have staple things like multi-windows for true multitasking. And there's a pretty decent support with uh, personalization here thanks to the downloadable themes. But what separates the S6 Active experience is, is um, Activity Zone. So you press the button on the left side anytime, it launches the app and it's basically a hub for the outdoorsy type of person. Not everyone's gonna really be using it a whole lot. You get things like the weather, your S Health integration, you have access to the flashlight, stopwatch, the compass, and even barometer to measure, you know, tell your elevation and the pressure. But like I said, it's not really a die-hard feature. As I've said already, the S6 Active is running the same internals as the S6. So it's powered by a, an octa-core Samsung Exynos 7420 chip with three gigabytes of RAM and the Mali T760 GPU. So the performance is just top-notch out of the box. It's smooth, responsive, and it feels just a little bit tighter than the S6, surprisingly. But then again, we've been using the S6 for a little bit, and we do notice just a little bit of hitches every now and then, but this just feels very tight. You expect it to handle all sorts of processes, whether it be simple things like opening up apps to even more processor-intensive stuff like 3D gaming. It can handle everything. The camera here is the same as the Galaxy S6. So that's a 16 megapixel camera with a wide f1.9 aperture lens. You have optical image stabilization, a backside illuminated sensor, an LED flash, and an infrared white balance. The nice thing is that you can quickly launch the camera app by double pressing the home button anytime. You have a lot of different shooting modes with it and also a very useful pro mode which you could adjust some of the parameters like the ISO and even white balance but it lacks the shutter speed control of some other cameras that we see nowadays. In terms of the overall quality, it's pretty impressive. You get strong, sharp details. It's pretty fast and snappy with its speeds. And it takes some incredible looking macro and outdoor shots. You could see it in the, the image with the tennis ball. There's a sharp focus with the ball itself and you have some of the foreground and background elements having that out of focus effect. 
It also has a very useful HDR mode just because it offers a neutral exposure without having a whole lot of artificial qualities. And it's low lighting performance, as long as there's a little bit of lighting in the scenery, is still pretty good with details, but it becomes a lot smudger looking in lower lighting. As for its video recording, there's a lot to offer. You have 1080p, 720p, different frame rates, and also Ultra HD. So with Ultra HD, you get an impressive amount of detail capture. It's pretty smooth, also fast with its focus and with its stabilization, it helps in keeping things very steady. And overall, the camera is just impressive on all fronts. Of course, the handset's multimedia experience is a strong performer as well. The media player, the music player, nothing different. Same TouchWiz music player we've seen before, but the speaker has been repositioned to the backside and now delivers an, uh, 83 decibels of audio power, which beats the S6 and S6 Edge, but it tends to sound overly sharp at the loudest setting. That could be primarily due to the grill. It seems smaller, so it has a little bit of a sh you know, sharper tone to it. Now with the display, it's it's just gorgeous and brilliant, especially when you put it to adaptive mode, it makes movies come to life just because it changes the uh, saturation, even the contrast to give us the most optimal viewing experience. We really didn't find a whole lot of change with the handset's call quality from the S6. It's still average, usable in most conditions, but what's different here is that it now offers a pretty useful extra volume mode when you're, in, when you're taking a phone call through the earpiece. So the volume output is boosted a little bit more. So even the noise conditions, we're still able to hear our callers. The design isn't the prettiest, but the good thing about the S6 Active is that they've, they're able to actually put in a larger battery than the S6. You now have a larger 3500 milliamp hour battery, and it's one of the best in terms of performance. Day to day use, you get close to two days of normal usage out of it, which is pretty impressive. But even more impressive is in our battery benchmark test, where this handset achieves a mark of 12 hours and 9 minutes, which beats things like the Motorola Droid Turbo in that area, which is again, just beyond um, impressive. And finally, it has the same quick charging uh, offering. So it only takes 103 minutes to recharge its 3500 milliamp hour battery. So it's pretty quick. And on top of that, as an alternative, you have wireless charging as well. If you've been eyeing the S6 series for a while now, the decision to pick a handset is going to be tougher with the introduction of the S6 Active. Now, it has a solid performance like the other two handsets, but it boils down to wanting the sturdier design and the water resistance uh, construction. It has the same performance as the other handsets, so you have a perfectly calibrated screen, very fast processor, it takes some impressive looking photos with its camera. The only trade-off we can see here is just that it lacks the fingerprint sensor of its siblings. So you don't have the extra layer of security and payment options. But what you do get with this is of course the tougher design and a significantly longer battery life with it. And it's priced similarly to the S6. So that's $200 with a two year contract through AT&T. You do pay it just a little bit more if you're gonna go the outright cost, uh, outright way. But either way, it's a great handset.